Whether you record your own music at home or simply make YouTube videos, you'll know how important good audio quality is in conveying that something has a high production value. However, working from home does have its own challenges. For example, untreated walls reflect sound waves back, making the audio sound echoey and reverby and just in general very unprofessional, and something has to be done about it. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build a set of very high performance acoustic panels, which absorb incoming sound waves, preventing them from being reflected back. And they have a huge impact on the overall sound quality, which I will be showing you later on in the video. Now, in addition to performing really well, they look great too. And when mounted onto the wall, they give a modern slick appearance, which is super important if your studio is ever going to be on camera, like say for a YouTube video. Now, the process of building these is actually very interesting. So let's get to it. Before we begin, don't forget that you can support my work here on YouTube by becoming a channel patron at patreon.com slash DIY perks. And in return, you'll get a variety of perks. Many thanks for your support. The first thing we'll tackle is making the frames that give the panels such a modern, slick appearance. And to make them, we'll be using, perhaps surprisingly, angled aluminium bars. This is so that the resulting frames will be very lightweight, acoustically transparent, and be easy to put together. While not quite as cheap as using something like wood, it is still very cost effective and should work out at about $5 per sound panel. Once you've got six bars of equal length, it's time to attach them together using a little 3D printed bracket, which you can find a link to in the description. If you don't have a 3D printer yourself, it's worth keeping in mind that they're starting to become quite commonplace in local libraries and maker spaces. So have a look around your local area to see what's available. Failing that, you could send the file to an online 3D printing service instead, or cut a more basic version out of wood. In any case, once you have them printed off, a hole needs to be drilled through the aluminium bars so that the brackets can be bolted to them. As you can see, the screw head sits flush with the surface, which was achieved by carefully countersinking the hole with a much larger drill bit. With the first three bars connected together with these brackets, you should have a pretty solid equilateral triangle, and it looks surprisingly good considering its simplicity. Once you've done likewise with the remaining three bars, it's time to connect the two together. For this, we're going to use 50mm long hexagonal screw mount spacers. I suggest ordering these from eBay as it's the cheapest place I could find for them. Again, there are links in the description if needed. One side can be screwed in place with the normal screws, but to attach the other side in place, we're going to use some shorter hexagonal spacers instead, as this will help us to mount them onto the wall later, which you'll soon see. So, with the frame now complete, we need to fill it with something that can absorb the sound waves and not reflect them back. There are lots of different materials to choose from for this, but depending on the density and the thickness, they all interact with the sound waves differently. If the material is too thin and lacking in density, the sound waves would just pass right through it and bounce off the wall, meaning that echo and reverb would still occur. We could simply make the material much thicker, which would absorb the sound waves before they could reach the wall, but this isn't very practical unless you have a very large studio. So in order for it to be thinner, a higher density material needs to be used. But if it's too dense, you run into the risk of it actually starting to reflect the sound waves itself, reducing its effectiveness at absorbing lower frequencies. So it really is a balancing act, and it is worth testing the material out to make sure that it's suitable. One of the ways that you can do this is actually by wrapping it around yourself and talking to see how it affects the sound. Now the thing that you're listening for is obviously that it sounds much more dead, but you need to also make sure that it isn't making your voice sound boomy when you do this. So this is with the material, and this is without material. So you might need a friend to help you to decide whether the sound is more emphasized in the lower end. And if it is, that means that the material is actually bouncing back those lower frequencies. But if not, it's a good candidate. And as long as it does still sound dead, you're good to go. 
Now this one sounds a little bit boomier, but it's not too bad. So it is very suitable for what we need to do. And uh, this is actually just 50 millimeter thick upholstery sponge. Very cheap, very common, and works really well. So this is really my primary recommended material um, because it's so easy to get hold of, easy to work with, clean and safe. But another option is house insulation which works just as well, but has a much lower overall cost if you build more than 10 sound triangles. You could even try and get some for free if you can find a small amount left over from a new building project. One thing to note here though, is that I strongly caution against salvaging old insulation from a renovation, as it might not stack up to modern safety standards when it comes to emitted particles and could be very bad for your long-term health. So buy new and always read the safety sheet to make sure it's suitable. Now cutting insulation with scissors is easy enough, allowing it to fit snugly inside the frames as shown here. The sponge is a different story however, as it's difficult to use scissors to cut it down. So instead, after marking the shape out with a pen, carefully use a bread knife in one direction to cut through it, as this is quick and easy to do and results in a nice clean edge. Regardless of whether you use sponge or household insulation, it's now time to spruce them up to make them much nicer to look at. And for this, we're going to cover them with fabric. As economics are weird sometimes, I found it much cheaper to use a bed sheet bought from a discount shop rather than buying fabric from a proper fabric shop, but your mileage may vary. It just needs to be cut down with a large overlap so that it can be folded over the frame and glued to itself with hot glue so that it makes a nice tight fit. The reason it's being glued to itself rather than to the aluminium is because the glue doesn't actually adhere to the aluminium very well, so this method is much more secure. You could of course sew it instead, but that would be significantly more tedious and take much longer to do. Now if the fabric is too thin, you may be able to see the frame through it, so you might want to double it up by adding another layer like I did. This also improves the sides by hiding the glue points and it ends up looking super sharp. After re-adding the stuffing, the sound panels are essentially now completed, but we still need a way of mounting them onto the wall. This is what those smaller hexagonal spaces were for, as some hot glue can be forced inside them, followed by the head of a small nail. This provides some spikes on the back, which allows the frames to be simply pushed in place onto drywall, which makes them very quick and easy to mount. I covered all of the space available on my wall and they look superb, and much more interesting and modern compared to plain old rectangles. So all this is well and good, but appearances don't mean much unless it's backed up by good performance. To test this out, I made some before and after recordings so that you can hopefully hear the difference. So the microphone is at about arm's distance away and this is how it sounds with the acoustic panels on the wall. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And this is what it sounds like without the acoustic panels. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. So from that, you can hopefully hear how much of a difference these panels make. And it's worth noting that the more of them you build and dot around your studio, the bigger the impact they will have. And uh, it's really an essential requirement for any kind of home studio, and they look great too. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to check out some of my other content, as there's a lot there that you'll probably enjoy as well. But other than that, I'm Matt, you've been watching DIY Perks, and I hope I see you next time. Goodbye for now. Remember that if you like my content and want to support what I do here on YouTube, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon, as I'm currently building funds to construct a studio workshop to help me to produce more content at a much more regular pace. To help me to reach this goal, please visit patreon.com slash DIYperks, and in return for your generosity, you'll get free access to all project resources, blueprints and source files, and also PDF guides for more complicated projects. So again, that's patreon.com slash DIYperks, and many thanks for your support.